Many of us in this room are familiar with this image that we see on the screen. It's the type of juxtaposition that we're used to in South Africa. A mere stretch of road highlighting the stock inequalities in economic conditions and living situations. One could say two worlds apart. You see, I spent most of my life on the more privileged side, completely oblivious to the lived experience of those on the other side. Don't get me wrong. I knew that for a very long time that I wanted to work in food insecurity. I wanted to solve the problems of many disadvantaged South Africans and Africans. I knew I wanted to make an impact. But I always imagined doing it from my bubble. In fact, <laughs> I've been debating whether I should say this, but I always had dreams of working in the offices of the United Nations in New York. You see, I would solve their problems for them, but far from them. But a time for change had to come. If someone had told me on the day that I had taken this picture that this very place would completely change my perspective on how solving for impact really happens and how impact can be made in communities like Alexandra in South Africa, I probably wouldn't have believed them. You see, I like the previous speaker just mentioned, I thought that you come in like a superhero in the community, you make an impact with your solutions because we know it all, and then you fly off into the horizon, the top-down approach. But that was not the case. You see, we realized that people in townships like Alexandra are not poor, they're poorly paid. And many people in South Africa, like we mentioned before, 14.4 million people in South Africa are food insecure. Many of them don't get through to the, to the end of the month with their wages, if they even have wages. So someone who doesn't earn wages, or for example, earn, works a peace job and earns inconsistent wages, often bear the brunt of what we call poverty tax. A lot of us here know that food, it's cheaper when bought in bulk. But someone who does not earn a consistent wage is not afforded the opportunity to buy food in bulk. So as you can see on the screen, when compared rand for rand and gram for gram, a 500 gram bag of maize meal, as opposed to a 20 kilogram bag of maize meal, is almost double the price. This is where Kualisa comes in. What we're solving for at Kualisa is the poverty tax that I mentioned. So people can come into the to the outlet and buy food with whatever amount of money they have at their disposal. Okay. So what is this Twalisa that I speak about? Upon observing many transactions at Twalisa and doing many myself, I've come to realize that it's not just a call for informal transactions between two parties. And today, I'd like to share with you three lessons that I've learned through Gwalisa, which I, could, which I believe can be applied when solving for pressing challenges in, in communities like Alexandra. The first is in community itself. This is Mapula. Mapula runs a community-based organization in Alex, which feeds kids and sometimes provides them with other essential items. This community-based organization was actually passed down from her mother when her mother passed away. Mapula is a lifeline for many kids in this community. Sometimes the food they get from her is the only meal that they eat during that day. So Mapula, she's a mother to many. She's an aunt, she's a sister, she's a friend. But most importantly, she's a pillar in this community. Where Mapula comes in is that when we were thinking, where do we place these Twalisa outlets? we realized that placing it within a community-based organization where someone already understands the community and has a connection to the community, but most importantly can earn an additional source of income is important. So this is where Mapula, Mama, Lolo, Gele, and Tiamo come in. You see, when they're serving a customer, it's not someone that they don't know. It's a member of their community. It doesn't have to be a friend or a family member. But the fact that they're from the same community, you experience that love and respect with all the members of, that they serve, all the customers that they serve. The second one is small change brings big impact. You know, we always say that Kualisa is a pretty simple solution. If you go to other African countries, this is happening. 
But until you're actually in there and you, you, you do the work, you realize how much of an impact it has on the community. This picture you see on the screen um, is, is an interaction that I experienced at Kualisa. A really young, probably around the similar age as me, expectant mother came through to the outlet. And she used these 10 and 20 cents coins to buy two eggs for herself. For many of us, these coins, sometimes it falls on the floor and we let it go. But you can imagine that for this expectant mother, this was a, a very essential source of nutrition for that day, and it got her through that day. You see, that for me is, is what I think is important when coming into communities. You know, we think that sometimes simple solutions won't make an impact. But when I experienced that from, for myself, I realized just how impactful Kualisa is on the community. The last lesson that I've learned, or I learned, is in human connection, which I think is probably the most important lesson. Again, another story. Um, I think for me, this is the most um, impactful experience that I've had at Kualisa so far. Um, a young mother, again, came to the outlet with a 20 rand note, less than a dollar, or just under a dollar. And she had tears in her eyes. Um, and I remember her starting off by saying that her friend had just referred her to the outlet, and she, this was the only money that she had for the next few days. And she did not know what she was going to do because she had just bought some food for the child. And she just went on to thank us and continue to thank us for the work that we were doing. Um, and sorry, I get a bit emotional when I think about this. Um, but you just realize the importance of human connection. I was no longer solving the issue for them. It was with them. It was for Tabang who had the 20 rand and it would sustain her for the next few days. With this 20 rand, she was able to buy 500 grams of beans, she was able to buy rice, she was able to buy tea bags and sugar. And you can see on the screen, these are just some of the things that the customers have to say. Oftentimes, my boss thinks that I pay people to say these things. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a reality and it's an experience because when you realize that human connection is so important in solving for these issues, it's not an us and them thing. It's, an, it's, it's not a me and them thing, it's an us problem. Going back to this picture, we realize that this place had all the solutions that it needed. We weren't going to come in with something that they didn't know that they needed. Again, going back to the previous speaker, a top-down approach never works. When you're working with the community and you're working in the community, you realize that all you can be is a catalyst for change. But they have all the answers. When we bring a new stock, when we're making changes at Kualisa, the solutions come from the mamas, come from the customers. They'll tell you when something sucks, you'll remove it. <laughs> um, but honestly, you just realize the importance of working with the community, not for the community. Kualisa was intentionally launched on the 27th of April, 2022. I think many South Africans in this room remember, know that day and are familiar with that day as being Freedom Day. It's a day where the first, almost 30 years ago actually, the first democratic elections were held. And for us, it's intent, it was very intentional in doing so because it serves as a constant reminder to drive our mission towards democratizing access to food. Thank you for your time.